Hi, my name is Jim and I was retired. Managing money in a retirement, especially one that comes sooner than expected, can be very complex. For instance, everybody says, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Well, I use a three bucket system. Where do I start? Five years ago, I was pretty glad that I had a first bucket that had my cash in it. That enabled me to start my retirement. And I've got two other buckets. But I also want to keep track of my taxable, my tax deferred, and my tax free buckets. And I want to make sure that the allocations are all working across all of these buckets. Talk about complexity. Stay tuned to this video and I'm going to show you how I go about managing allocations across my buckets. And yes, ma'am, I said buckets. I know I'm using solo cups, but they're buckets. Now, I'll begin with my standard word of caution. I am not a financial planner. I have no special initials after my name. So take this as entertaining ideas from one educated consumer to another. Always do your own due diligence and seek out a professional if you need it. Let's start by talking about my buckets. The first bucket is usually my cash and equivalents buckets. And I think of this as a measurement of expenses for years. And in bucket one, I've got enough cash and equivalents to meet three years worth of expenses. In my second bucket, I've got bonds and income producing assets. Assets that will fund my retirement four to eight years out. Stuff that I don't have to change, I can generate income from it and let it be for a while. And then I have a third bucket with mostly my equities in it. And those are assets that I don't intend to need for more than nine years. The next set of buckets that you need to consider are the taxable nature of your accounts. You're going to have one bucket of accounts that are taxable, savings accounts, checking accounts, brokerage accounts, and you'll pay taxes every year on these assets. For most of us, the next largest bucket is tax deferred accounts. And these are the ones that you funded throughout your working career with the promise to Uncle Sam that you'll pay taxes on this as ordinary income as you make withdrawals. And then the third bucket is tax free. This is Roth. Roth 401k and Roth IRAs. You've put money in here after tax with the understanding that within rules, you can withdraw this money tax-free in your retirement. Now, these sets of buckets aren't the same as your list of accounts. Take out a piece of paper and start writing down all of your bank and brokerage accounts and all of your retirement assets with your employer and on your own through IRAs. That's a full list of an account. And you'll need to take a look at those accounts and see how they fit into these buckets. But then you'll also have to consider the asset allocation across all of these buckets. That's a complex task. For instance, can you come up with a pie chart like this that shows you your overall asset allocation and does it match your age and risk tolerance? Or can you come up with a chart like this that shows you those asset allocations across your three buckets of spending? You could pay somebody an asset under management fee of 1%, and if you did that, they'll sort it out for you. Of course, with a million dollar portfolio, that might end up costing about $200,000 over 30 years. Do you want to pay that for that kind of advice? Or you could use a robo-advisor. I did a video earlier on that alternative. Or you could figure out ways to do it yourself. And I'm going to show you some of those here. 
Hey, before I begin, did you like and subscribe to this channel? Please do so. The more subscriptions I get, the higher this will come up in search results. So the first website I'd like to show you is Personal Capital. They have a lot of great online tools. Now, when you sign up and you'll register for an account, it's free and you can use the free online tools. They will reach out to you and see if you want to use their asset under management advisory fees, but you're not obliged to do so. There's a link in the notes below. That's my personal link. And if you use that to subscribe to Personal Capital and link at least one account, both you and I could get $20. But I'm just showing this to you. You do what you would like to do. Now, if you go to the website, you can scroll down and see some of the long-range financial planning, retirement planning tools that they have to offer. There are a lot of ways that you can use this services, and I'll leave you to explore it and see what you can use. Let me just jump over here to an image that I've captured. Here's an example of how you can use the tool online with personal capital and get a picture of your asset allocation across all of your accounts. Now, I've gone through here and just taken a picture of my account to show you the asset allocation that I've got. I've also used Schwab. I'm a Schwab customer. You could go into their account system, do a portfolio review. You can link in your non-Schwab accounts and then get a picture like this that shows you your current asset allocation against your target allocation for their model. Again, both of these processes for Schwab and personal uh, capital, it's a, a little bit of labor-intensive process to go in and do a snapshot. So I, I do this about quarterly to look at my asset allocations. My main transactional accounts are in Quicken. And because that one captures all of my checking accounts, my credit cards, all of my accounts, and it's updated daily, I would love to get an opportunity to use their tools. Unfortunately, Quicken for Mac doesn't have as robust investment portfolio tools as the Windows version does. But I found a workaround for that. Let me show you. So the key in a Quicken account, if you use Quicken, is you get to this investing portfolio overview, portfolio value by group by account, for all your investing accounts. And then over here, there's a download button. And that allows you to download all of the data below here, which I've obviously obscured for privacy reasons. But that allows you then to pull that in to a spreadsheet. So I go ahead and copy to clipboard and then go over to the spreadsheet. And here I'm using numbers and paste all of those values into this sheet that I've entitled Quicken Values here. Now, this is all masked data, and I've modified it to give you a overall picture of my asset allocation for a portfolio of around a million dollars, and I've obscured values, uh, but it generally gives you an idea on how this spreadsheet will work. So once you have all of the data from Quicken loaded down into your spreadsheet, I've created two other spreadsheets. And I'll begin with this one called allocations. And I've gone through and using a very simple formula of Quicken's values here and then pulling it down and across, you're copying all of the data from the one sheet into this one so that you don't have to keep on updating this one. All you have to do is download the data from your Quicken software. Now, the most important columns are the cost basis, market value, and gain uh, or loss column. But I've also included the asset class data from Quicken. Now, when you download that and put it into your spreadsheet on this allocations spreadsheet, you're going to want to change some of them. If you'll notice over here, CDs in this account, this brokerage account, are listed as 
domestic bonds, and I'd prefer them listed as CDs, which is what they are. You'll also find occasionally a large cap stock will show up, but it's really a REIT, a real estate investment trust. And likewise, there may be some uh, accounts that they list as asset mixture that are really like 90% large cap. So I've gone through and adjusted all of those. I've also labeled cash for all of the lines that are truly cash so that I can track asset allocation for cash as well. Now, where you do have an asset mixture, like a balanced fund, go through the prospectus and find the equity to bond ratios for those asset mixture accounts so that you can use those data to further divide them. Now, the other thing that I do here is that I have asset allocation. And again, there's a weight in all of the cases against my total, let me show you that formula. It's going against F63. And in that case, it's going against a tally of all of the investment assets plus the cash that's held outside of the investments to give you the weight of your asset for the total portfolio, including cash. Now the fund begins with all of the asset allocations tallied. You can use this formula here with a sum if in it to count up the uh, weights, add up the weights of those assets listed as large cap. And for each of these formulas, it works the same way. It just uses the value over here, looks for it here, and adds this value to the total. And that gives you an overall asset allocation for international stock of 4.9%. For the asset mixtures, I've got 23% in asset mixtures. It then uses the formulas above to show you that you should divide this amount by 40 and 69, almost a 60%, almost a 40-60 split here. Those weights then add up to these down here. So this is a to this here is a, a total of this plus 40% of this gives you this asset allocation. And likewise, domestic bond gives you this plus this to give you this uh, uh, weight. Adding all the figures up, you get overall allocations for your major asset groups. And that feeds this pie chart, which gives me a snapshot of my overall asset allocation at any given time. This data with the weights also feeds an overall equity to fixed income ratio, and I get to compare it to a target allocation. I borrowed an idea from the Schwab portfolio overview and created columns that show the difference between where you are now in your target, as well as a dollar value of, so how much should you move to bring it into balance with your target allocation? In my case, I use a 110 minus age to give me equity weight. There are a lot of theories on whether you should do this or just stick with a 60-40. This is the model that I follow. I'm also using the Quicken values to drive this spreadsheet as well called three buckets to give me an overview of my three bucket uh, portfolio. And I've done the same thing of using a simple formula copying it down and across to copy all the values from the Quicken Values page to this page. Now, in this case, I've added three columns here, one for bucket one, one to three years, one for bucket two, four to eight years, and for bucket three, anything more than eight years. In each case, I put an X to indicate whether the asset is in bucket one, two, or three. CDs that are maturing this year or next are in bucket one. Equities are in bucket three. 
Some of it is a value judgment of what you put into the bond portfolio. Mostly they're bond funds. I don't have any individual bonds. But this gives me a, a snapshot. And once you have the X's down here, you can drive these formulas down here. You can look at a sum if there's an X in this column to give you the market value of what's in bucket one. And likewise in bucket two and likewise in bucket three. And that also gives you a percentage of how much is in each bucket. I have about 17.75% of my assets in bucket one. This also gives me a, a look at the average gains, but I, I do recognize that this is misleading because bucket one includes the cash lines in all of my accounts. In many cases, this 14% gain is really gains from bucket three and bucket two that are generating income over the, the period of time that I'm studying. Now, I can also compare the tallies of the buckets here with what the target bucket should be. Again, these are based on expenses. So in bucket one, you should have three years worth of expenses. So I should have 180,000. I have a little bit more. I should have 300,000 here. I have a little less. So this gives me an idea of what I should move to bucket two or bucket three at any given time when I'm balancing out my three buckets. Now, then I took it even one more step and I figured out using two sum ifs, the calculation of market value if it is in this column and if it has the domestic bond amount. And you get these amounts. And again, you have to adjust the asset mixtures to get these amounts here, which then drive this chart over here. Asset allocation over buckets. The beauty of this system is that all I have to do is update the Quicken values here and the other two sheets are automatically updated with the most accurate reading of where your asset allocations and where your three buckets stand. I only have to go back and change these when I add or subtract an asset, a complete asset. If you sell within the assets, it adjusts the market value and, and cost basis. But if you, for instance, uh, a CD matures and you need to remove that line, you need to remove the line here, remove the line in the two other sheets to make sure that when you paste the data in, it doesn't overlook overwrite the wrong data. I will concentrate on ideas like these on how to manage a forced early retirement in this series that I call I Was Retired. As I said before, it's the best decision I never made. Be sure to like and subscribe to this video series so that you'll always follow them. And add a comment below on whether you use a three bucket or no bucket system for your retirement income planning. Thanks.